fear that is unlike all other fears. It has a special clammy chill, a deadly gift for inspiring deeper, darker dread. It is the fear of unopened doors, of locked rooms, of bends in lonely roads. It is the fear of the phone call in the dead of the night, of the stranger you recognize, perhaps from a nightmare. It is the fear of the unexpected, the unfamiliar. It is the fear of the unknown. Kasia. Leonora. Where's my drink? not going to get that drink. Yes, Andre. You are. Do you want to poison yourself to death? Kasia! Come here, Leonora. Come here, Leonora.
Give her the glass, Kasha. Now, both of you bring me my drink. Kasha will pour, Leonora will serve. And come as you are. In your fine stiletto heels. Leonora's rich and respected father. And when we have extorted him, we'll leave London. Not very respected, but very rich. Put those things back in the bar. Then open the car trunk. Take out the bags and put them in the back seat. Leave the trunk open. He is dead! He is dead! 
He has to be. That one leaf could have murdered a whole world of Andres. We were wondering if we could telephone a garage. We have no telephone. If you are wet, come stand close by the fire. I wonder if others can see your beauty as I do. Sometimes it seems you have to be blind to see beauty. Where 
Where is it coming from? Ticks of time. From upstairs. From a special room upstairs. It sounds like a million mad clocks. My Mr. Hobart tinkers with time, just as time has tinkered with Mr. Hobart. Who was it? Who could it have been? Did you think I was someone else? Yes. But she'd forgotten. He's dead now. Such tricks have strong imagination that if it would but apprehend some joy, it comprehends some bringer of that joy. Or in the night, Imagining some fear, how easy is a bush supposed to bear? What are you doing in this house? I welcome them in, Mr. Hobart. Could they leave at once? Or will they spend the night? We'll go now. We'll spend the night. We'll sleep here on these sofas. My name is Tone. Please tell me your name. My friend is Leonora Edmund. I'm Cassia Payne. I'm sorry I frightened you in the woods. It was I. You feel my hair? It's still wet from the rain. Good night, Mr. Hobart. Please do not need me or needlessly disturb me. I have a great deal of work to do tonight. Upstairs. Even in death, he'd find a way to betray us. This is the kind of neighborhood I was looking for. A good neighborhood for unmarked graves. Where are you going? I'm going to bury Andre. How? The fireplace tools. And these? No, no, I mean, how? When he isn't in the trunk, I saw as I ran by, he wasn't there. You didn't want to see him, so he wasn't there. Such tricks have strong imagination. Kasha. 
my father could never have submitted to Andre's blackmail. There would have been a scandal and he would have died of it. But he'll be safe from Andre now, won't he? His world will be safe. I can't help you bury Andre. Nobody ever helps the grave digger. to ask them off. Andre to abandon his scheme, begged him. But he had those heartbreaking letters Daddy had written Kasia, and he thought they would be negotiable. How was he killed? She told me to pick a leaf off the Thanatos tree. Thanatos means death. How does one get a poison leaf into a blackmail? We put it into the shaker, and we shook it. Kasha poured, I served, and he drank. I'll never forget his face. He knew he drank something fatal, and he went on smiling, like a crushed clown. I didn't think he'd been drowned. What did you say, Mr. Hobart? I've intruded upon your reverie. Forgive me. I only came in to see if you were comfortable. Mr. Hobart, why do you keep a useless clock? Would you be very unhappy if your murdered clown came suddenly back to life? How could he? All dead things were once alive. In the past? In the past. The past is gone. Is it? Suppose the past and the present are two separate time cycles, coexisting, coiling about us concurrently. Then all one need do is, is cause a slight tilt. Tilted one way, the present would slide into the past. Tilted the other tumble into the present, and with it would come past things as they were before they died. Yes, Miss Edmund, it can be done. It has been done. For one fraction of a fraction of a moment, the cycles were tilted. The past slid into the present. And I tumbled back to life. I'm going to show you my workshop, where it happened, where it may happen again. Don't you want him to be alive again? Oh! Your clown, Andre. You're not a murderer, Miss Edmund. If you were, you'd feel no guilt at the, the simple expedient removal of a clown and a blackmailer. Come, see him live again. The guilt will slip out of your heart.
Could someone have dragged his body down the stairs and out of the house without you or I having seen or heard? It's been a noisy rain. I saw Kasia Payne leave. With the tools. I remember being sadly amused, imagining her wonder when she opened the empty trunk. I came in here then. And I did not hear her return to fetch the body. Nor did you, Coles. No. Nor did I. You didn't take the body away, Coles. No. I did not. He tumbled back. Just as I did. I told you, Carlos. I told you it was no accident. He was dead, and now he's alive. He's out there somewhere. Alive. I'd better go and find him and explain it all to him. Did you scream my name? Did you bury him, Kasia? I heard you scream. Your fingernails are clean. I heard my friend scream for me. Why did she scream? If you would listen to an old blind man, he would tell you to leave this house at once. Why? You are in the midst of much madness. Not all madmen are dangerous. You cannot see the distinctions between the benign and the deadly. You are not blind. Is that why you're not afraid? Is that why you stay here? This is my house. Mr. Hobart has been my guest for almost a year. He stumbled upon my house in the dead of night. Just as you did. He was in flight just as you were. A blind man's house is a good hiding place. Was it, Mr. Hobart? Unless I have been wrong in my assessment of his madness, you need not fear Mr. Hobart. It's the other who is a danger to you. The one who drank your poisoned drink. I told them. About Andre? No, how can you tell anyone about Andre? I told about our murdering Andre. Wouldn't it have been wiser not to? I didn't intend to. Somehow they pushed into my dream. They hovered over me. And I couldn't move on until I'd answered Mr. Hobart's questions. It doesn't really matter. Mr. Hobart may be able to hypnotize an anxious, susceptible girl, but he is not a policeman. He can do more than hypnotize, much more, and much worse. He has found a way to bring back the dead, as they were before they died. He has brought back Andre, as he was before we killed him. Andre is dead, Leonora. Dead and buried? He wasn't in the trunk, was he, Kasia? He was in the trunk, Leonora. No, he wasn't. He got out. He's alive. Would you allow me to explain? Andre is alive. Again. I can hear him walking around us, back and forth. I've been listening, and I've been hearing him. Listen! No! Leonor, listen! <laughs> I 
I remember it as if I had seen it. He had screamed in his delirium. And I confess my own life had been so bleak and so undirected that I was shamelessly happy to hear even a delirious scream. He'd been hanging there for almost a week, bound by his own magnetic wire. He had no food, no water. I suppose he'd been in a comatose state, for he'd made not a sound for almost a week. But when he screamed, I went to the room that he calls his workshop. I unfastened him. I carried him down to his bed and brought him back to health. And he thought you'd brought him back to life. No, not I. He believed that his time-tilting device had done it. He still believes that. He's convinced that he was dead during those comatose days, and that the cycles of time tilted and slid him out of the dead past into a lively present. Oh, thank you. When did the rain start? Almost the moment you came in out of it. You can go now. Quickly? Yes, quickly. Thank you for your kindness and for your rationality. Kasia, stay here, Leonora. Till morning. I'll be finished by then. No. We will go now, as we've been asked. Wait in the car while I bury him. Did he die, Kasia? Mr. Hobart? Andre. Let's not miss a juicy, rich minute of it. <laughs> Leonora! 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 Perhaps she died. Then our time-slanting host will simply have to tilt her a little slant and slide her back to us. Close the doors, Colas, and lock them from without. Please. Sorry I brought you back. I was wrong to bring you back. Back from where? Hmm. Hell, I imagine. Do you intend to right your wrong? Yes. With that? No. With this, I shall persuade you to return to my workshop. 
I'll try to slant the cycles the other way. I'll try to send him back into the past. I imagine hell will be glad to take you back. You're one of its own. <laughs> of madmen. Why are they so fortunate? Why don't they hurt the way the incurably sane hurt? Why does reality twist their vitals? Who are you, madman, that everyone should humor you so? You're not a curly-headed child. Your delusions are not games. Your workshop is not a nursery. It is a fool's cluttered madhouse, a trash heap of clocks, a cobweb of common household wire. You stole me out of the warm little trunk of my car, and you propped me against a cold, useless pole. And you actually believe such solemn silliness has brought me back from the dead. But well, I was not dead. There is no Thanatos tree. I spun them a tale of it, and they believed it. Do you believe that I would allow myself to die at the hands of such inept, fancy murderers? <laughs> but oh, the fun of pretending. It tickled me to the pit of my soul to peep through my lashes and watch them shiver with guilt, just as it tickles me now to break your hold on unreality. Shall I do you this one small favor? London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. We cannot wait for Leonora. Coolus. Have you humored me? I know what it is to be blind. When you found me up there, I had been dead for a while. Do you believe that? There is death. And there is death. So many loved people have died, Coles. In my time and before my time. It seemed to me all those endings were untimely. I worried about what would become of all the love left over. So with trash heaps and cobwebs and utter faith, I built an antidote and allowed it to resurrect an evil clown. I am not the man to tinker with time, Colas. No man is that man. That man is God. Goodbye, Colas. Where are you going, Mr. Hobart? I'm going back into the past. The dead, harmless quiet of the past. I thank God that kindness is blind.
Won't you do me one small favor, Leonora? was going to kill her. Murder, madness, and other lurking horrors are the raw certainties that await you in the depths of the unknown. And no switch of time, no twist of plan can cancel your meeting with it. For some night, in some blind panic, you will venture into the world of dark reality. And on that night, you will keep your rendezvous with the unknown. 